Parental discretion is advised. What's up, guys? This week on the Wrestling Mayhem Show, we've got London Calling, we've got Nature Calling, and we've got the Eye of the Tiger. Stick around. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Wait for the perfect time to attack. Don't give up what you want, take it back. Wait for the perfect time to attack. Yes, son, I got it right here on my Samsung Galaxy tab. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the mayhemiest of all the mayhemies. It's a wrestling mayhem show. We're going to talk wrestling. We're going to have a lot of fun. I'm Sorgatron here in the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA, as we have been for almost eight years now. Eight? Eight years. Yeah, that's right. That's right. We'll be celebrating that in a few weeks, but more on that some other time. With me, as usual, is the uh, mayhemiest of mayhemers, is the Papa LB. Maybe. He's frozen. Ladies and gentlemen, he's frozen. We'll get him back. Uh, <laughs> but the mayhemer in training is Eamon out in San Antonio, Texas. How are you? According to that statistic, I would be 12 when you started the show. Are you serious? Yeah. You- That's heartbreaking. <laughs> For you and me both. LB, are you uh, back? Hey, I'm back. And what tell you? <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> I have no idea what just happened. Hey, it's technology. <laughs> That's how it goes. But uh, hey, this is a Wrestling Mayhem Show. You can find out more about us over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. We're on iTunes, Com. Stitcher, YouTube, and other places you can find your fine, fine podcast shows. Uh, you can also drop us a line to that email address at... Good times. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Uh, you can also drop us a line at 412-206-WMS0. Uh, you can dial us. You but can you drunk dial us. you're a piece of shit. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's a little worried <laughs> to alienate the, uh, the group. You at least wait till the second se- uh, segment. Um, Fucking ain't nobody phone calling shit. Uh, Fuck them. Anyway. It Fuck. was a light week. It was a holiday. Uh, you were you on the never, holiday. It was so a holiday. I mean, I mean. Yeah, you know, I'm a little tense for being on vacation. I'll be honest with you that things are a little crazy, even though I just spent a week beach and touring a mansion. That was weird. But fucking, yeah, I'm back now. Shit's intense. All right. <laughs> so you didn't do anything. Somebody's going to get punched. Somebody is going to get punched in the mouth, and I think it's going to be Eamon. Eamon! <laughs> Nasty Eamon. face. Yes. <laughs> Give me a reason to punch you in the mouth. Um, do you like Mr. Anderson? God damn it! Punch in the mouth! <laughs> well, let's start the show. Uh, we'll get to the punching in the mouth, uh, but we'll start with the other way that we Which know how. Which is mostly what wrestling is about. <laughs> with the... Fan, well, we Dear got... May Hemians, I know many claim that Gale and Tilapia is a carbon copy of AJ <laughs> and Tamina. I see it side of this story. Both are stars with their own personal bodyguard, but the purpose they are serving is different. Tilapia is a defense mechanism between the challenger and the champ. Tapa is, is being used as the utensil of Gale to clean the slate. Hence, Gale issuing a challenge to all comers as confidence in her ability is affirmed by the presence of Tapas. AJ seems to keep Tamina around for looks since she hasn't really prevented Bree from her getting her hands on TJ. My final point in this comparison is simple. I would rather see Tilapia delivering the TKO to anyone in her path than watch Tilapia hit the flying hysterectomy of the ovaries on Nikki. But that's just me. Questions? You botched that intentionally. <laughs> Number one, top rope moves are always amazing to me. Which off do you think is the most impressive? AJ Styles used to do this thing where he would uh, run up to ending and just go whang like that. That's my answer. <laughs> that, helps, that helps so much for the I, podcast. I'm trying, I'm trying to imagine how the swing goes. Poing! Like that. It goes like that. Okay. And your hand goes whoosh, all flat. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Whatever. Uh, yeah, um, I, I'm kind of, as far as like off the top rope moves, I'd say I'm impressed with um, 
<clears throat> anybody that's like a 450 or something, um, that's, I mean, that, yeah, uh, the, the Paul Lund version, the, the, the Shima Zion version, like any of those guys, um, uh, who else does it? Uh, doesn't, uh, 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 uh Wolfman, uh, Gabriel does it now. Wolfman. Wolfman. <laughs> what? Justin Gabriel. They're calling him the Wolfman for a while, weren't they? Am I crazy? I, I, yeah. I just thought that like, you couldn't pinpoint his name, but Wolfman was looking. <laughs> he hasn't been on TV in for, like forever, at least the TV that I've been watching. But yeah. it happens. I mean, I it happens. Fish wrote a song. What's that, it? What's that, LB? Fish wrote a song about the Wolfman's brother. You know what it's called? No. Wolfman's brother. Oh. Okay. <laughs> what about you, Eamon? What, what were you into? Uh, blockbuster. It's the underrated uh, top uh, turnbuckle move. Uh, more people should be doing the blockbuster. Okay. Well, yeah. well, explain the blockbuster for those the uninitiated. Blockbuster is basically a uh, if you ever seen uh, Buff Bagwell, kind of popularized it. I guess you could say is the you go on the top turnbuckle and then you dive off with uh, over your opponent and hit a neck breaker and it's really cool looking. It's okay. really awesome. Okay. What's the sound effect? <laughs> sound effect because mine went fwing. what's yours i'm guessing if it's a neck breaker there should be some sort of crunch yeah that's a good answer that's I'm, pretty, a good answer. I'm pretty sure mine was splat yeah that's a splat maneuver Although I, I, number two okay I've, oh, uh, you're, you're, oh, oh, oh you're all right i've been watching this whoa whoa, whoa you cut out cut out so down i have been the Cena DVD that you guys sent me. Both I and my children thank you. And I see a shirt design for the man. My question, what is your all-time favorite t-shirt design? It's uh, it's 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 an interesting question. Uh, CM Punk has had a lot of excellent, excellent T-shirt designs, uh, and I'm also a fan of the classics. Uh, it's hard. It's it's NWO is simple, and it has in throughout the decades. True. If you go to ProWrestlingTees.com, I think you can get a WMS NWO style T-shirt. But no, I'm probably no, wrong. No, no, that. we don't have that there. Um, there is, if you find our store in Spreadshirt, we have it there, but we don't link that anymore anywhere. I don't think we might have that link on. Silver That's a thing that we com. had at some point. Yes, yes, I still wear that around. And, and, and when we get like some more sales on the pro wrestling tees, and we can add more designs, I definitely want to bring that back. Uh, so mm -hmm. you can go to wrestlingtees.com and buy one of those and step us towards that goal. Um, <laughs> Sword so T-shirt designs. You know, I was a fan of the um, the DX returned ones when there was like the Chibi DX on the shirt. Chibi, mm. and then like it was them, like and sometimes I would have them, and then they're showing their butts on the backs or something. Um, I thought those were fun, to be honest. Uh, probably not my favorite of all all time, uh, but definitely up there. I'm trying to think like like ones that I I was like that's the shirt I want to get. You know. Um, 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 I would. I had a Jericho Holic shirt, one of the originals, um, and 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 just about anything. Anytime Stone Cold came out, right? Mm. Arrive, leave, raise yeah. hell. Arrive, yeah, leave, raise just... hell, leave. You know. Mm -hmm. 90s, the nineties were good for those simplistic shirts, like like, like the Austin three sixteen, which we got all the random others three sixteens, like the uh, NWO one, like you talked about. Um, I, I think that was the best era for that kind of thing. So, excellent. I completely agree. Eamon, what about you? Uh, I like any t-shirts, uh, and it's not a one that's not done a lot. Any t-shirts that are written in cum. <laughs> Those ones are fun. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Do you not know the reference, LB? Did it just go over your head? <laughs> I'm guessing it. TNA is horrible making shirts. Um, no. Uh, I... <laughs> Because I'm the indie wrestling guy, I'll go for an indie wrestling shirt that I like. Um, well, one of folks, my favorite thanks for listening own. to the Wrestling Mayhem Show. What the hell? You can. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> <good> night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Written in calm, young man. AJ Styles has got a great shirt. Uh, no, uh, 
uh, my favorite shirt that I own is my uh, El Generico t-shirt that uh, he had for a while. It's a blue one with like cartoon El Genericos on it doing like flips and it says Olay. And I like it because it's like sort of a, – it's a wrestling t-shirt and it's based off of one sort of res- wrestler. Uh, but it's sort of uh, universal. I think I can wear that t-shirt out in public and <laughs> someone could notice it and they may not know who El Generico is. But it's like, oh, that's like a luchador dude in a mask doing flips and it's cool so yeah good answer with the open challenge issued by kim which female wrestlers would you like to see being brought into tna to take on the champ notice uh uh we do uh, tna impact after shows i didn't realize at any point in time that gail kim issued an open challenge <laughs> so that's really good now. <laughs> uh, um God, I don't know. Who's that dancing bitch from NXT? Emma? I vote for her. Sure, why not? Leave your multi-million dollar WWE developmental contract. No, no, no. She's in NXT. Yeah, Yeah, I think maybe they get 80 grand. They're not not related to the WWE. With the the opportunity of making more. Well, yeah, of course. But, you know. Um... Man, I don't know. Like, I, we're thinking like an indie chick would come in, right? I would assume indie. at this point. Uh, um, I mean, there's no I don't way know it's... if you need another like WWE talent. The closest like WWE, sort of, but like even still indies, uh, they use them for like that knockout one night only yeah. pay per view. Yeah. Uh, I would definitely say a Serena Deeb would be very good because I do think yeah. that was the one that yeah. WWE. Ooh. If if the situation was right, WWE could have really done something with that, or even a return for Karma. Awesome Kong. Yeah, I don't I mean, think I that's going to happen. Doing it if not, if not even just briefly. Daisy Hayes. Uh, I I recently watched the uh, Awesome Kong you shoot. That's not going to happen. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not going to happen. Uh, You'd be surprised. Bring back Daisy Hayes. You remember her? Does she still wrestle? Yeah. I don't know. Last uh, I knew, I think she had some medical issues and was out well, for, she was, for a bit. She returned recently. Like she, she was at a show. She hasn't wrestled. Um, but yeah, I like Daisy Hayes. Uh, there's a lot of indie girls that uh, I think you could take advantage of. And that, that sounded Whoa. horrible. Whoa. Um, yeah, that sounded bad. And I wish I could put those words back in my mouth. Uh, no. Amen, Jesus. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, but no, there's talent so so much in the indies that – you know, there's plenty of options. Hmm. Uh, and also from the chat room, we do have, and see if I can throw this up here. This is the this is the shirt in question that uh, that Eamon was talking about. Yeah, yes, that looks like some wow. It's entitled discharge. Ah, oh, jeez, <sighs> that's completely wrong. But it's Anybody just else hard? What? Anybody else hard? Oh, not anymore. No, just me. I know Candice LeRae, spelling, was seen as Dixie's assistant a few weeks back, but her opponent from her tryout match was a chick named Veda Scott from AIW in Ohio. Mm-hmm. She is solid on the mic, and while she needs a bit more work in the ring, I think she would be a great addition to the knockout roster. Sorry well, for the well, long evening. Very good choices. Great work leading into the big sure guards. Dustin. Awesome. And, yeah, and she's also been... Uh, She's been the interviewer on Ring of Honor for the longest time as well. Yeah, she's starting to valet there too. Is she? Um, Good. Yeah, with uh, R.D. Evans and a couple others. And so. she was also a, a mainstay on uh, on Pro Wrestling PWO, which became Prime Wrestling that we you know talked about mm-hmm. more recently with wrestling uh, and everything. Shimmer talent. So yeah. Mm-hmm. So excellent. Oh, what's her fuck? Uh, what's uh, used to be in WWE? Now it's down. Yeah, she posed naked, and then they were done with her. Narrows it down. Christy Hemme. does. A- a- no, uh, not, Ashley? Not Christy Hemme. Don't be disgusted. She's already there. <laughs> um, no, the really skinny chick that I didn't really like. Marie? Christy Hemme? Maria. Maria. Yeah. Oh, you didn't like Maria? Is that right? Is she the one that's banging what's-his-name in ROH? Yeah, I think so. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I was never a fan of her. She always seemed like very bland in both her wrestling ability and everything else. Mm. Mm. I was more ever of a Reese like man dit- myself. Ever since the ditzy, like sort of dumb character, she wasn't anything special. Yeah. 
All right, and also we had some interactions on the Facebook, guys. I, I threw a question out there earlier in this week. Um, who had the best mustache in wrestling? We had some interesting responses. Uh, first of all, what were your uh, individual responses, guys? I don't know. Um, I, I have to agree. I don't remember who said it, but I have to agree with whoever said Magnum TA. Magnum TA is a very good choice. That's just a badass mustache. See, the thing is, I can't think of a lot of mustaches because there's a lot more beards in wrestling. Uh, mustache is a little less common. Uh, shoot. Well, from the from the Facebook, uh, Charmin says Rick, Rick Ruder, Magnum TA. Uh, That's who it was. Alex Carter says uh, Jake Manning, Man Scout. That's a good choice. I haven't seen Man Scout for a while to know that he has a mustache. Uh, he made like one appearance in IWC years ago. Marion Fontaine on the Indies up here in the Ohio region. Um, and also, why is it even up for debate in a picture of Zeb Corder? I can't. I gotta agree with that. No, you know what? Dutch Mantel would be a good choice. Dutch Mantel. Yeah, he's been he's been working it lately too. Uh, Riz says uh, Big Scott Hall. Uh, Jesse Graham's out there says Jesse Ventura. Didn't consider him. He's got it's not not a bad one. Uh, another early one for we. Or, uh, I'm sorry. Another local one for Wheels with Butcher Maddox. Madrox. I'm sorry. Uh, look those guys. You know, both Marion Fentank and Butcher Madrox. Look those guys up on the internet. I don't. I don't think it's posted anywhere. Uh, but there was a fantastic mustache versus mustache match that uh, that we filmed for uh, the DVI over in uh, Massillon, oh, Ohio. Oh, Cody Rhodes. Cody Rhodes, yeah. Cody yeah. Rhodes. I don't know Cody Rhodes. Jervis Cottonbelly. Which will about the man, but Hulk Hogan has a classic, classic mustache. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Jervis, Jervis Cottonbelly is good. I also agree with Leg Kick TKOs in the chat room saying Dasher Hatfield. Dasher Hatfield, yeah, exactly. Exactly. And then and this was this is a question I floated out there because I've been watching the uh, Grace Rivalries, the 25 Grace Rivalries on uh, Netflix. By the way, horrible in between segments with uh, with uh, Renee Young. Horrible. Wait, excuse me? Horrible. It's excuse not her me, fault, Sorg? though. It's not her fault. Trust me. Uh, she's uh, on okay. green screen, and the whole thing is like based on ke- elements in chemistry, and she relates everything to chemistry, and there's a lot of big words being used, and there's stuff that has absolutely nothing to do with wrestling. I don't know who wrote it, and it has a hard on for chemistry, and her saying these big words, and she's wearing an awkward lab coat, uh, and just one shot for like three minutes. Of her standing there oh, saying Renee. the script, which means she had to say the script the entire way through with these ridiculous words. Um, but it comes Sorry, off Renee. really, really bad. I was going to say no, no one do, will talk. Ho- the segments no they do are really good. Young, but, oh, sorry, yeah. what's that, Eamon? I was going to say no one talks harshly about Renee Young, but I'll give no, you a pass. No, no, yeah, it's definitely not her fault on this one. She was given like the intern put this together and says, "Here, you, you can have Renee Young." <laughs> so. Um, but I put up, what, what do you think was the greatest rivalry of all time in wrestling? Uh, we had a few out there. Riz says Vince Austin. Uh, Sean Tischer says McChesney and Clearfield. <laughs> so that's, in that's all of rivalry. wrestling. In all of wrestling. <laughs> He's, uh, that's, his, that's his backyard. He's the one that actually helps put together those shows up in Clearfield. Uh, but we'll get to those. Uh, Sharman <laughs> says Steamboat Flair. Good one. My Mike says Tough Call. But probably Vince Austin or NWO. WCW, gotta agree with that. Uh, I'll be. You said uh, the Horseman and Dusty, or Nash in his own legs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Kevin <laughs> Nash just he just can't get over his own thighs. Ah, uh, one from the crowd here. Missy says Scott Hall and his drug addiction. He overcame it. <laughs> He's overcoming. Yes, he is. So so did he Jake. went over. Uh, Goldberg versus wrestling skills from Jesse Grams. Uh, Alex says uh, Maven versus Charisma. Um, Fuck so, you. Chris Spiker says uh, him versus Chachi when you get in his way at IWC. Uh, more some, some more Vince Austin from Spiker. Uh, Phil out there says Rock and Roll Express versus the Midnight Express. It's lasted a lot of years. That's true. That's true. Uh, Rick says Big Bossman and Al Snow was a good one to uh, R.I.P. Pepper. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you remember that? He made him eat his, eat his own dog? Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Rick Knox versus mm-hmm. the Young Bucks. Do you know that one, Eamon? I do know that one. That's very entertaining. <sighs> Me versus Puppet. <laughs> uh, Alex says the original ECW versus Cleared Checks. Oh, nice. 
And then somebody said Doc Remedy versus the Last Scion, whoever those are. Not even know. Who the fuck are they? <laughs> Who have they ever beaten? Who they ever beat? Even That's less each other, last as far as I know, <laughs> just right. each other. <laughs> just each other. <laughs> um, but hey, hey, hey. If you, you know, let us know. Uh, of course, all those are on the social media. Those are all from the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook group. A lot of great discussion happened there. More discussion happening over on the Google Plus, actually, too. And now that they've intermingled the comments from the YouTubes with the Google Plus, it's all one thing. Uh, so that's been pretty cool to see uh, all that mixed up and all you guys being involved there uh but in the meantime if you want to support this show and support uh some of the fun stuff we're doing here we're trying to do some bigger fun stuff here uh coming up at the end of the year and uh from there forward you can uh one way you can support us is uh buy a t-shirt if you like we talk about t-shirt designs actually dustin i don't think you read that uh lb but uh, uh dustin in his email said he's a big fan of the good times at wrestling mayhem show uh t-shirt that we have uh, designed by the great alex cars uh also property of F of mayhem if you dig this stuff if you dig our designs the awesome designs by alex go check them out they're 1999 uh really good quality i actually just wore the good times t-shirt out to the clearfield show for uh international wrestling cartel i got a few comments on it and i told him to go buy it <laughs> so there you go um uh, but while you're there a lot of great people including uh, chris hero who uh, we'll talk about i'm sure a little bit later uh Ooh. just released from the wwe has a, a line of t-shirts on here the classic chris hero shield up there for your purchasing pleasure um first time i saw him was wearing one of these on a on an icp dvd i'm sorry vhs uh, so, uh, great that he's, he's got that out there again. Um, so go check all that stuff out. ProWrestlingTees.com. And of course, check out our t-shirts at ProWrestlingTees.com slash WMS, uh, for our offerings. So with that, let's go, since we're looking at some indie t-shirts, to the Indie Minute, Eamon. Indie Minute. Whoa, indie Minute. Uh, yeah, let's talk about indie wrestling for this week. Uh, first of all, let's talk about the stuff that happened this past weekend uh, with our good friends at Sogatron Media. Uh, Combat in Clearfield. Sorg, how was that show? Oh, it was a great. It was a good show as usually. These are kind of like the more spot shows that IWC does because they went. It's weird to see an indie do like kind of house show kind of situations. Um, mm. But this is a great actually charity event for big. Uh, Big Brothers Big Sisters out there raised over $500 for that. Uh, did some great stuff. Uh, they did uh, they did they did some interesting things where um, and they do this sometimes when they go out to these towns like Clearfield and stuff where the faces and heels kind of flip here and there. Uh, founding fathers were the were the good guys for the night. Uh, some great actually words of encouragement from uh, Dennis Gregory uh, out there who's who's been, you know, you know, kind of Kind of a, a bad guy for a while out there. Uh, great matches. There was uh, things that I have never seen in pro wrestling before. Um, you ever see where they have a little guy and so they had an eight man tag and they grab everybody's the guys each of their limbs and just toss them up in the air? Sure. No, no we've had this has had somewhere right. Um, so, Probably. So they they drop chest flexor on top or maybe vice versa on top of Corey Fitch futuristic in a 69 position and did it to both of them uh oh, okay i see what you're saying yeah yeah and just like threw them all up in the air um and, and another thing I've, I've never seen before is a double doomsday device hmm. as in like uh, uh two guys stack shoulder on shoulder on shoulder uh wow yeah <laughs> And, and getting close. So that that was fun. So it, it, fun stuff like that. Uh, uh, great commentary. Of course, I'm listening all night to Joe Dabrowski, and he has some great guests in Dalton Castle, Bobby Fish from Ring of Honor, uh, Aiden Vale getting a try at the mic. Uh, so uh, all together, a really good show, really fun show. Um, a pretty good main event there with uh, Justin Idol against John McChesney. Uh, good match against Bobby Fish and friend of the show, Andrew Palace. Well, friend of the show, Bobby Fish as well, I guess now. Um, They're all great friends. Great match between Mike Elgin and Logan Shulo. Uh, Shulo. Mike Elgin, uh, famous in the Minnesota area for uh, his, uh, his cell phone protector commercials that you can, can, <laughs> you can watch if you're in I'm the sure Minnesota region. Last night. This is, hold on, let me see if I can pull that up. No, I, can't, I don't have the Facebook. Oh, up. Michael Elgin. Oh, Michael Elgin. Uh, super Michael awesome Elgin. guy. Super awesome wrestler. Not a good pick in, in commercials. 
Um, he wasn't too bad. Apparently, his name's just Unbreakable. <laughs> So go check that out. What, what, what do you search to find that thing if you're not on the Facebook group? Uh, if you search Michael Elgin commercial, you could probably find it. All right. Excellent. Excellent. I, and it was so, funny because you posted yeah. that. I had just listened that day to the uh, Mike Elgin uh, Art of Wrestling uh, mm. uh, uh, thing. So uh, that was pretty cool. They were talking about seminars and stuff and you know whether they wanted to do them or not or, or participate. It, it was a really good talk uh, uh, for all those guys. Um, and of course, also this weekend there, I, I got to see a little bit, of course, uh, the B team went out, uh, and filmed RWA, uh, open season five, I believe it is, um, five. great main event with friends, of, friends of the show, G Raver against, uh, Ashton Amherst. It was, I believe in no DQ. I saw that there were ladders and tables involved, some crazy stuff going on out there. Um, there is a guy that he's a larger fellow. And I think he stole the Taz, Tasmaniacs gimmick. Because hmm. he came out uh, chained up, uh, led by security. And I, I saw the intro earlier today. And, and, and he completely, I think, stole the Tasmaniacs gimmick. Uh, but he does very well at it, actually. Um, and actually hmm. chased off everybody, all, all, all the uh, uh, announcers into the corner. Um, see if there's anything else just looking through this. Um, other than that, other than that, you know, great, great cruiserweight stuff. They got a lot of great cruiserweights, uh, in that company. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, Lodi, WCW's old, uh, sign guy from the flock in, involved as well. And, uh, and, uh, Ryan Mitchell, Ryan Edmonds getting the crowd riled up as always. Uh, but you can check out what's going on with them. RWA, RWA live.com. We'll have the wrap up up here in a couple days so you can see a little more in depth but go to look at the old ones and get an idea what's going on there all the crazy stuff they got the teasers and everything uh just like they have over at iwcwrestling.com as well uh so go check that's what's going on around here in the pittsburgh area um but i'm hearing some good news coming up you, did you know i didn't realize ring of honor is in town the weekend of royal rumble really yes I, some, huh. what well they're they're having it downtown at the convention center which confused hmm. me. It's a huge convention center You're in the middle of downtown, right? Uh, and I'm like, I think they're having it downtown in half of the convention. Well, yeah, center. it's not taking up the entire. Well, they didn't even take up the entire ice gardens up uh, down in Aaron mm-hmm. Uh So they'll get a, a quarter, quarter of the convention center. center. They're going to get about an eighth of the convention center uh, to film <laughs> their little show here. While there's probably a coin convention on the other side, uh, but still, no, it's great that it's downtown. I think more people have a chance to experience it. But of course, I, I just realized over the weekend that is Royal Rumble weekend. So, and and we know Ring of Honor usually will have shows around the weekends of like the WrestleMania Fan Fest and everything, and kind of try to ride that a little bit. I'd love to see if we got like Dragon Gate <laughs> or something it. along here, right? I mean, wouldn't mm. that be great if we started getting Dragon Gate Evolve around because it is like a Royal Rumble. It is at least the Northeast. Maybe we get a little more out of it. Uh, so I'm looking really forward to that kind of weekend of wrestling we're going to have here in Pittsburgh. Uh, so Absolutely. Kind of, kind of a, it, it feels like it's going to be a, a small WrestleMania experience that we're going to get in this town. Mm. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. So um, what else is going on out there, Eamon? There are tons of stuff all around the United States uh, in the indie wrestling world. First, I want to talk about an event that I will be attending uh, this weekend in Austin, Texas for Anarchy Championship Wrestling. They're holding their annual Lone Star Classic Tournament. It is a tournament of 12 competitors from ACW competing to uh, become Lone Star Classic Champions. So it's always a fun show for them every year. Uh, If you want to go uh, check that out, that's at the Mohawk uh, this Sunday, the 17th in downtown Austin, Texas. Uh, if you want tickets for that event and more information on all uh, what you can expect, you can go to anarchychampionshipwrestling.com to get all the info for that. And yeah, if you're in the Austin area, I hope to see you there. Uh, also, there are tons of events this weekend uh, from you know, all around if you're in the East Coast and beyond. Um, one of the companies that uh, I want to mention uh, that's having a big event this weekend, another big tournament, uh, Really interesting stuff from Inner Species Wrestling. If you haven't heard from them, they're oh, the yeah. uh, they're a Canadian group that also has done some shows in the U.S. They're Shakara, but a bit more adult, a bit more edgier. These guys, uh, these guys actually shared a booth next to us at WrestleCon. Yeah, I, I, I think you mentioned something about that before. Uh, they're they're famous. If you ever seen the uh, uh, infamous Lego Death Matches, they're the ones that originated it. Uh, they do a lot of fun stuff, and they're holding their annual Burger King of the Ring tournament. Uh, which is 
So the first year, this will be a tag team tournament. So it's Burger King of the Ring Double Whopper. So yay, puns. Uh, it's going to be in, in Danbury, Connecticut. That on, uh, is the, 16th, the second which... panda I've seen in wrestling. The first one was on Stranglemania <laughs> 2 from Japan. Yes, indeed. Giant panda. There's, uh, there's a ton of, ton of really fun, interesting talent uh, in air species wrestling. Uh, that's going to be this Saturday, the 16th, at the Heirloom Arts Theater in Danbury, Connecticut. Uh, so if you want to go check them out, I believe the website is interspeciesrestling.com where you can get more information about Burger King of the Ring. Uh, and you can check out all their uh, previous events, all their great stuff at smartmarkvideo.com and smbod.com if you want to go check them out. And randomly, uh, Eddie Kingston's in it. Eddie Kingston. Hey, it. ladies yeah. and gentlemen, Eddie Kingston. <laughs> sure, why not? Uh, but yeah, uh, there's going to be some fun stuff there. Also, uh, if you're in the uh, New York area, I encourage you to attend uh, two Dragon Gate USA events that will be help happening this weekend on the 16th in Queens, New York, and on the 17th in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, very stacked card with a lot of the Dragon Gate talent mixed with some of the best talent in the U.S. And just named the main event for the uh, Brooklyn show on the 17th, Johnny Gargano is defending his Open to Freedom Gate championship against uh, returning to the independent world Chris Hero. Mm -hmm. uh, so that should be very fun. I believe there's iPay-Per-Views available for those events on DGUSA.TV and it's through uh, WWN Live. So uh, hopefully go check them out. Uh, go support Dragon Gate USA. They got a fun mix of talent. Uh, and yeah, it looks like an interesting uh, two-show uh, weekend for them. And uh, the final thing I want to talk about is a, another tournament uh, that is happening. Woo! It's, tournaments! It's tourna I love tournaments! Tournament <clears throat> tournament yeah yeah uh i mentioned this a couple weeks ago the tournament for tomorrow which is happening for beyond wrestling their second ever tournament for tomorrow uh, uh the uh the 17th in providence rhode island they're taping uh, i believe block a for the tournament friday and then block b for the tournament uh saturday and those are just uh they're sort of like tapings that they're holding that they normally do where it's just in front of the wrestlers the finals of the tournament will be on the 17th in providence rhode island along with a, a stat card that includes biff Busick versus eddie edwards in a 60 minute iron man match uh michael elgin will be there taking on jaka uh chris dickinson versus ring of honor star tomasa champa uh there's gonna be a lot of fun stuff uh, uh and like i said the finals of the tournament for tomorrow uh, which is also a mixed tournament uh, featuring stars from Beyond Wrestling and from Women's Superstars Uncensored. Uh, so it's going to be an interesting stuff. So I encourage you to check out Beyond Wrestling. Go support them. Go follow everything they're doing. You can always follow them uh, on their YouTube channel. They're always putting up free matches that you can check out and go see uh, their stacked talent roster. Uh, go support them. Uh, one of the participants, and I have a little bit of favoritism, will be uh, Matthew Palmer, who's debuting for Beyond Wrestling from Texas. Uh, he's a great Texas talent, and this could be a real big chance for him to emerge. Uh, but there's also a lot of great talent from the East Coast. Uh, I believe a uh, couple talents from different parts of the U.S. So it's it's going to be really sick. So go check out Beyond Wrestling. Go support them. And you can get in more information and tickets for tomorrow, tournament for tomorrow uh, at lookmanofans.com. Respect the Beyond Wrestling for like having a different concept because it was – like you know, like the, the, this this wrestling without the fans in front of the wrestlers, and and for them still going. I mean, I see they have sponsors for this event actually, uh, and and I know mm -hmm. it was a different. Uh, I, I know I've mentioned it before, but National Pro Wrestling Day, this idea that they were there and like the wrestlers came out and were on the on the on the ring apron watching the match and everything. Uh, not in a lumberjack style; they were just there watching and pounding on the ring and stuff. Um, it was a really good concept, you know. Uh, and, and brings a different feel to it and a more pure wrestling, you know, kind of idea to it. So I'm really, I'm really digging that kind of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, go support all the indie wrestling that's happening. Uh, and that my friends is the indie minute for this week. Excellent. Thanks for that. And of course, uh, and I might've just turned, no, oh, my phone just died. Uh, if my phone was alive here and I click on the right thing, I'd be able to show you the wrestling mayhem show app. It's on the iOS app store, uh, Amazon app store on your iPhone, your Android device, uh, quick hits for, uh, all the audio for the show, as well as bonus content that we put out each week, uh, alongside the shows, uh, and, uh, qu uh, quick links to our Twitter, to our Facebook, to our phone number for you to, uh, drop a line to the hotline. 
and, and all kinds of other stuff. So please check that out. It's $1.99. It supports the show, and we really appreciate it. We know a lot of you guys appreciate it out there, so we're going to keep pushing out uh, bonus content for you. Uh, so with that, uh, let's take a little look, a little clips of what's going into this week's, uh, a little taste of this week's uh, WrestleMania show, Gold. That's exclusively for that app. And uh, take a look at what happened, uh, uh, not this past weekend, but before with IWC Retro Reunion. Some quick clips there, the music from our friend Basic Sickness. Uh, and we'll be right back with Remember When. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's going on now. Your voice is going to reverberate down through my body. <laughs> Who did that? Who's yelling? Why is anybody yelling? Eamon. Eamon talked to me in a big boy voice. Hello! Hi. Yes. Oh, hey, Sorg. Hi, guys. Sorg's not dead! Sorg! I ran into a lady. I feel like an engine! With the Falcon Air with that hole! That's right, folks. Retro reunion from IWC. It's hard to say, but man, it's easy to watch. Go and pick it up now at SorgatronMedia.com. Folks, welcome back to the Wrestling Mayhem Show. You've done very well to find us. And you've done even better sticking with us this far into the show. Well done. Papa Lunchbox is proud of you. And as a reward, we're going to take you on a little trip down memory lane. In a little segment that we like to call, Remember When. Oh, oh, remember and when. And we're going to remember again. Everybody knows it's the best segment in town. We're gonna sing it all around. Remember when, remember when, looking up his nostrils, remember when. Everybody loves the remember when. Time to remember when again. Folks, this week was in the UK. They have had some excellent, excellent shows in the UK. Um, due to their strong ties there. And they've employed some spectacular UK wrestlers. Uh, so in this week's Remember When, we are going to talk about our favorite British wrestlers. And fortunately for me, I get to kick things off with who I feel is one of the most underrated WWE wrestlers of all time. The supremely talented, fantastic character of William Regal. is absolutely spectacular. Yeah, he got a bad hand with the he's a man, he's a man, William Regal stuff. But you know what? He made it work. He has put on incredible matches all the way up to most recently um, his match with uh, Cassius Ono, the recently released uh, uh, Chris Hero. And also I remember when he won the – I think it was the most recent King of the Ring, and he just went full villain. It was amazing. Absolutely fantastic. Sorg, tell me, who's your favorite Brit? Well, it was it was Wade Barrett until you took him. Uh, I'm sorry, no. I mean, I, I thought you were going to take Wade Barrett. Uh, it was with William <laughs> Regal until you took him. Um, let's go with the. You know what? I'll go Dynamite Kid on this one. Uh, innovator, really, kind of, uh, uh, you know, one of the original. I want to say high flyers, but he was a. Uh, uh, that's a guy that I think never got his due as far as WWE goes. Like, I, I feel like that guy could have been, uh, steamboat macho man level, you know? Uh, and I, and I'm not sure exactly what took him out, uh, of the WWF. Uh, if that's when he started having his physical ailments or not, uh, because I know he was part of the British Bulldogs and then we had the British Bulldog. Uh, so, so I'm curious about that. Uh, so I, yeah, I, I go with Dynamite Kid then. What about you, uh, Riz? Shit. Um, <laughs> I'll just go with Wade I Barrett. I don't remember that. I'll just wrestler. take the easy way out on this one. Wade That's Barrett. Rosie. That That's man. He was the Mayo. superhero in that training. That man is just a man. 
<laughs> he is. And he comes off good. That's he, it. Even though he's not booked well, he comes off good. He comes off as a badass. What about he you, Wills? He comes off awesome because he is British. Exactly. What about you, Wills? I'm going to go old school. I'm going to go gentleman Chris Adams from wow. World Class Championship Wrestling. Hmm. I mean, I, I loved a lot of his work back then. I mean, and he's one of those ones besides Regal that you could get behind with the accent and who wasn't American. Okay. Okay. What about you, Eamon? Uh, this is going to be a sort of interesting one. He's, I mean, he's not maybe up there with a Regal or anything like that. I actually really liked his work in TNA. Um, and he's done amazing stuff on the Indies uh, and like beyond. But uh, I was always a big fan of uh, Doug Williams. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was always a really good technician to the point where like his run as like X Division champion I thought was really well um, for the most part. Uh, like delivering like really stellar matches like constantly. Um, I I always liked his work. I always thought he was very uh, a very talented performer. So yeah, that's uh, the one I would probably go with. Awesome. What about you, Bobby? Uh, I'm I'm gonna go with one that uh, is not really that like he wasn't in WWE that long, um, and he had the potential to be something, but they kind of like messed it up with the one gimmick, which I I really enjoyed. Um, I'm gonna go with Paul Burchill. Okay. With with the yeah. pirate gimmick yeah. and, and, and and Katie Lee Burchill, you know. Yeah. Uh, I I just think he should have been in WWE a little bit longer than he was, but you know he was a good wrestler. I, I enjoyed his matches. Awesome. Uh, well, are you Mike? Uh, well, I, I thought Eamon was going to take mine. I was going to say Nigel McGuinness. Oh, wow. Yeah. I I love, love me some Nigel matches. Like, I didn't watch much Ring of R, but what I did, it was usually stuff with him. And when he was in TNA, it was very good as well. I'm surprised none of us mentioned Davey Boy Smith. <laughs> See, because I was he going wasn't a really great too. wrestler. I was, was he? going to, but then I was like, "No, nah, I'll go a different way with this." You know, <laughs> um, he was just like one of those that was just there, right? Um, I was trying to stay away. Well, from I, I disagree. Dave, Davey definitely put on a lot of stellar performances. He did, and, and, and he's got he's got a huge reputation. I think he's the obvious pick. <laughs> yeah, uh, mm-hmm. when you think of British wrestlers, I would think he'd be the first one that most people would sort of go to. Mm-hmm. Him oh, and Regal and also so. underrated. Layla. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. Layla. I forgot. I always forget Layla's British. Mm-hmm. She kind of fades in and out of it, doesn't she? They never play it up. No, they don't. They did once when she was with Regal. Yes. Mm-hmm. I was like, what, a week or, week or two? No, that was, <laughs> no, that, was that was a while. That was a while. That was during that King of the Ring run that I mentioned. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, mm-hmm. Regal turned off all the lights. That was great. Fucking sitting on that throne, all angry like a heel. God, that was. Crazy. I remember that. I, I remember that one specifically because she was supposed to be like a love interest for Jamie Noble, and then she turned and joined Regal, and then cut a promo where she said she didn't want someone that was noble. She wanted someone with nobility. Wow, Regal. Wow. <laughs> wow. What happened to Nadia? I'm a sucker for lines like that. Media. Media. Uh, from the chat room, we try to get her in, but uh, I like kick TKO. Uh, she says, uh, British includes Scotland and Wales. So Rob Terry, I mean Roddy Piper. Nice. Oh, if we're going to include Scotland, uh, Drew McIntyre. Very underrated. Yeah. Definitely underrated, un- un- underused. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what the deal is with them. Although, come on, guys. That last night was pretty tremendous with the Union Jack kind of deal, right? Yeah, yeah that of. was cool. Mm-hmm. There was, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, we talked, we did, I think we did talk about this in the Hangout last night, this idea of them uh, just being, what, what like re- rebranding themselves each city he co- they come to. <laughs> I think it's really helped to get that. What's we that? We had a lot of that, this, we had a lot of that discussion during the Hangouts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We had the, uh, them sets. dressing up as whatever <laughs> city they're in. We yeah. have the backgrounds changing to whatever city they're, they're in. <laughs> we were just trying to change everything. Yeah, That's because yeah, England is a magical place that WWE it. just invents things for. Exactly. <laughs> um, so uh, with that, so what, what do you guys think? Uh, Raw last night, we had our England thing. 
Um, like I said, we did we, we, our hangout actually turned into a Survivor Series booking a thon that got completely decimated this morning with some announcements. Yes. Uh, but uh, it, but it was a fun way to end it. Uh, we're we're two weeks out from Survivor Series. Does it feel like a Survivor Series? Nope. You, nope. Nope. You know, it's not to say they can't have like a six man tag on Raw. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if that's the go home match for Raw. Yes, yeah, that defeats the purpose of Survivor Series. No, it's gonna it's gonna come out that Vince controls one faction and Triple H controls the other. I feel like they would have done this already. Yeah. They're doing yeah. that. Oh, and this is the, okay, this is the point I'm still not getting with this whole like feud, the the like authority feud. Are Triple H and Vince feuding? Not yet. Nope. No. no. Like did Triple H exclude Vince or whatever? Because well, like right now, right now it's Triple H versus the board. Because from what <laughs> I, because from what I took from it, Vince is still like gung ho for it. He's just not on TV. He's like a background yeah. player. Last we saw, Vince was uh, night he, after he was, SummerSlam. He was, yeah, where he was standing with Triple H and Stephanie. So, but interestingly, quiet. I always mm-hmm. that that always stuck with me. It was like he was there, but quiet. So it's like we kind of stuck him in the picture. So because since they were arguing beforehand, we see oh, I'm on your side with it. Um, so I, I don't know. I I, I think uh, again, I think this authority. The authority thing is going to run all the way through WrestleMania. It has to be. And all this is built up and all this crazy stuff. Um, you're not going to see much resolution, I don't think, until until WrestleMania. Or build, build up. If then. It. Look at it this way. It's Vince McMahon. He will come back to television. Yeah. If we've learned anything, if he's alive, he's going to be on television. <laughs> <laughs> he was even dead once and he came back. That's right? True. Yeah. See? The man He'll was in hospital bed and he got smacked in the head with a bedpan. Vince is a zombie. Right? Vince is the Illuminati. <laughs> Vince is that's, the governor. That's probably not. Ooh. Nice. Yeah. yeah <laughs> I don't even watch that show. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's messed up because spoilers, he the came back this week. Yeah, that's messed up because he came back this week. <laughs> yeah, I know. How did you know? I, do, I read the recaps. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> don't watch the show. <laughs> I don't. I so do not wait, watch wait, that you, show. So you treat it like 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 Impact or SmackDown? <laughs> yeah, I read the recaps because just like Impact, I can't stand to watch it. It's too horrifying for me to watch. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Okay, wait, wait. Uh, uh, fuck it if this is a wrestling show. Uh, so is it because it's too disgusting of a show or it's badly it's, shot? No, no, it's, it's, it's disturbing. It's, uh, I mean... Walking Dead, you know, if from what I'm reading is accurate, it's beautifully done. But it's very – TNA is disturbing for a different reason. <laughs> Although TNA can actually be described as the Walking Dead, I think, at this point. They're even, no, they – Hogan's on there, so. That's no, true. but – no, I mean their company in general. I know. I was, <laughs> like they've been bitten. We're just waiting for them to turn. <laughs> And everybody's figuring out which one gets to stick the spike through their head. Um, exactly, and it's gonna be Vince. It was me, Dixie. It was me the whole time. I don't watch Walking Dead. Neither do I. <laughs> because it's past your bedtime, Eamon. Yeah, I don't. Uh, watch. No, it, no. Hey, that can we talk about wrestling off of Eamon's TiVo? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, I don't know. know. I kind of like this Walking Dead shit. discussion that's happening right now. Um, <laughs> Wow! Welcome to the Walking Dead podcast. <laughs> welcome to the Pod talking. Dead. Welcome to Talking Dead. No, no, that already somebody exists. already does that. We're somebody already does. dead. Mayhem dead. Somebody dead. already uh, definitely already does that. So, jeez. Uh, uh, Walking um, mayhem. So I posed a question, and I, I kind of want to get your thoughts. I know a lot of you guys chimed in on the Facebook uh, uh, thing, but I think it's a good discussion question. So, so. Uh, lately with SmackDown, remember when we we talked about how SmackDown was the, it's a special occasion when CM Punk spot t- pops up. It's a special occasion when John Cena pops up on, 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 on Friday night. Uh, now, they're on every episode. Mm-hmm. Um, Raw is even more, uh, 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 you know, indistinguishable from, from SmackDown, except I can see it the next day on Hulu. Uh, well, in its entirety, at least. Uh, 
what, what do you think? Like, one, have any of you, first of all, ha- let me know the affirmatives, have any of you watched more SmackDown since nope. this has happened? No, no, no. I watched, I have the, watched last week. the same amount of SmackDown. The same amount of SmackDown. Well, no, okay. I'll, you, I'll, what I do with SmackDown generally is on Sundays during football, if only one channel has a football game on, I will keep SmackDown on in my picture-in-picture box. Okay. Okay, there's that. Yeah, now for me, it's a, it's a, a Saturday or Sunday morning kind of thing where that's my – because, I mean, like Raw, I, I'm on with the Hangout and everything, and I'm usually doing a little bit of prep for the show and whatever other kind of stuff. So I'm not really relaxing to watch Raw. Saturday morning, if, if I have nothing going on, and maybe Sunday morning if, I, if Saturday doesn't work, I, I put on SmackDown. I'm still in my jammies. I watch it and – post stuff maybe to the the facebook board when i have questions about stuff uh but it's every now and then yeah sorry every now and then sarah will get a wild hair up her ass and be like hey it's friday night let's get some ice cream and watch some wrestling and then we'll watch smackdown um but that is those nights are very few and far between i thought you were gonna say it's friday night and you know what that means (laughs) we fuck on friday night michael Michael, we fuck on, on Friday, Friday nights. <laughs> what do you think wild hair up her ass means? I knew exactly what it meant. I knew exactly what it meant. Hey, uh, My dick is rabbit. Oh, that probably cut out. <laughs> yeah, that cut out. That cut out in the most interesting oh, spot. So you call it Peter Cottontail? Self-censorship. My dick is an angry rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> I think Ippity hopping down, down the bunny title. trail. This is NPR. <laughs> <laughs> One way we should do the show in that style. Um, <laughs> but but I mean, do you see do you see any benefit to watching, it, or are you just kind of tired of everything after three hours of Raw on Monday? It's it's I don't depend. They have good wrestling. It, it's, they have good wrestling. Mm-hmm. I think if there's a if there's a focal match on the card, then yes. Like say like the Daniel Bryan Luke Harper match. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna watch that. Like, I'll, I'll tune in to watch that. But like a lot of the times, it's wrestling that's on, and normally they'll just do the same matches on Raw the next week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm not really missing. Much. Although this week we got Handicap Palooza. Also yeah, an arm yeah. wrestling competition. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, we know what segment we're all going to be fast-forwarding through this weekend. Yeah. Divas Battle Royal. All right. The, I, I, obviously, <laughs> we need to take this out around to the show that I know everybody is way more interested in than, than the actual wrestling shows. Total Divas. Total Divas, yes. yes. Total uh, Divas. Mike, ah. Mike, I know you did your uh, – I, 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 by the way, I love that you've converted from doing the, the uh, streamline or the uh, uh, stream of consciousness uh, articles – to just mm-hmm. doing the what would you call it? Total DVR divas. Yes, totally DVR divas. Uh, I, I I've been enjoying that. That that was interesting for the for. I, the drive th- I think I'm gonna do that regardless of whether or not we do a hangout, just because it's way more fun to li- to just live blog that show because it's so goddamn ridiculous. It is. <laughs> it is. Um, and, 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 and it's, and you've been doing, and, and you get into the really good response because you also do the same thing with Impact Not Live. Uh, so it's, it's kind of a cool recapper, uh, a little bit. I, I like, I mean, for me, as, as an audience that doesn't see either show when they come on, um, I, I think it works out really well. So, so, uh, you first, what are your general thoughts of this week's, uh, Total Divas, the, the return, the, the half season break return? Natty is pissed. <laughs> <laughs> oh no uh, hashtag jokes the, the whole almost the whole show was about Natty pissing herself mm-hmm. wasn't there a part about John Cena shitting himself too yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. well yeah God. but that, he that, puts on some fucking high quality entertainment yeah but I, I'm pretty sure I've like any wrestling book I've ever read there is a story about someone pissing or shitting themselves in the ring. Al Snow. Al Snow, yeah. Al Snow had his twig and giggleberries out in a stalling vertical suplex, for God's sakes. Uh, Blue Meanie. Mm-hmm. One could argue that Blue Meanie shits himself in every match. Oh. 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 Friend of the show, come on. I don't get it. <laughs> 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 uh, 
No, it's funny. I don't get it. <laughs> I don't get it either. I don't understand. <laughs> what's, uh, what's happening? I don't. <laughs> it's, it's okay. But, I'm back uh, to all of us. Um, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Natty pissed herself Man, Natty because pissed herself, apparently which... she's never been hit in the stomach before in a match. Um, <laughs> never, <laughs> ever. I think this episode, you know, demonstrated more than anything how how set up all this stuff is. For one thing, um, it seemed really weird. And why all this? And it all happens. Everybody's so excited to have a singles match on superstars, um, which really lends to because I mean, like these girls have been around for how long? And they're like, oh, you got a match tonight. Like that never happens, you know. Which is like, oh no, it really never happens, you know, almost. Um, it happens now that they got a much lighter Divas roster. Yeah, and they're reflecting that. In, well, yeah, there's that too. Uh, and then they're reflecting that in the show. And they're obviously getting more time. We've, we've, we've talked about before where we've had two women's matches in a night sometimes. Was there a women's match last night? Yes. There Tamina. was. Yeah. Uh, Tamina, Tamina, Nikki, Nikki uh, versus Diesel. Nikki versus Diesel. <laughs> sure. Tilapia. Tilapia. Nikki versus Tilapia. We're still confused. We're still confused. Uh, um, but no, I mean, I, and I think that's good for it. And as we've talked about before, what I think on that pay-per-view, uh, both the Divas and the uh, tag teams really delivered. So it's great to see that. Unfortunately, now we got to bring it down with t- Total Divas. Um, so there's that. It kind of, it was kind of interesting to see uh, the you know behind the scenes on you know stuff leading up to the SummerSlam match. Um, yeah. Can we can we just say and all agree that Cameron is the worst person in the world? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> he uh, is worse me. than Hitler. Excuse me, it's Ariane. Oh, it's oh, Ariane. No, 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 Get no. Right. I'm using her slave name. It's Cameron. Oh no. Whoa, whoa. We're not doing that anymore. Oh, no, it's fine. It's fine. She <laughs> deserves it. No. Oh. No. Holy shit, man. Wow. What wow. The fuck? Yeah, that's... Holy... Oh, I wait. With... Oh. It's inappropriate uh, in this instance. I just realized that. Yeah, yeah that, was, that was a little rough. Wow. I sit, I sit corrected. Um, I'm still calling her Cameron, though. Because I don't like the name Ariani. It's, it has too many vowels. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh. Anybody else have any thoughts on Total Divas? Are we happy it's back? Are we glad? Or or, or we're just like, oh, it's something else. Are we? It's oh. television that we can watch. I'm glad, glad WWE is making money on television. <laughs> I enjoy Total Divas for all of its horribleness. I enjoy it. Mm-hmm. All right, all right, excellent. Yeah. Uh, anything else you guys want to touch on this week of wrestling? Do you want to talk about the Chris Hero situation? Yeah, he got fired. That. He got released. Yep. Now, now, what now, else is there Eamon, I, I know you posted that you were depressed. Depressed is oh. a strong word. No, no. You said all the depression. Am I correct? I he, don't remember, but I, 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 did. I you did. I read. You it. did. That's what you put. Okay. Well, mm-hmm. it's it's a sad story. It's it's not. No, it's not. It's not really a sad. How story. is it a sad story? He'll he be wasn't back being like used in WWE. We all know that. So it's sad for the fact. It's sad for the and, and I'm not angry about this, but it's just sort of sad for the fact that you know he is a very talented wrestler. Yeah, so is Daniel Bryan. So is CM Punk. And, and it's not. So, and, no, no, and it's not to say I'm, that. Look, I'm not the people out there that are saying, "Oh, he's an indie wrestling guy." They shat on him or whatever. No, it and I, it's not. Me saying WWE was completely in the wrong for this or whatever, but you know, I'm hoping that like and like he said in his response, he's hoping to make a return back. So yeah, I know, and this it's not the first time this has happened to uh, a lot of these guys. You know, um, it happened to Claudio for Christ's ha- sake. Did it happen? Yeah, to Claudio? he mentioned. Did it happen to Claudio? Got yeah, a contract in like 2005. Oh really? I, I wasn't yeah. aware of that. Yeah, and got and, released. And now look at him getting, uh, you know, John Cena saying really good things about him in the, uh, you know, in front of a German crowd. Plus the poll. <laughs> Plus the what? They, they, they had a poll um, that asked who, or WWE Universe, who the next breakout star was going to be, and he had like 54% of the vote. Yeah. He, 
I mean, the, well, you can't pool. read too much into that because I'm pretty sure Shelton Benjamin won one of those polls at some point. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. It happens. But but still. But, um, but that's the thing. Like, stuff happens. And and I think the immediate thing a lot of people do is just go blame WWE for it and say, well, you know, you guys know he's an indie guy. You know he's like a darling or whatever. And you've mm-hmm. given him a hard time and you made it so that he can't succeed. But stuff happens and, and, and things develop. And – uh, and like Chris here, I uh, if you haven't read, I think he posted on his Facebook like his like statement, sort of very respectful. He mentions like I'm gone, but like there are tons of talented people in NXT, even those that have not come from the independents, mm-hmm. who are so richly talented that yeah. you know you have to still support them, you have to still follow them. Um, and I don't think it will be the end for Chris Hero. You know, I, I, I seriously hope I, I hope and I'm I'm hopeful that, and I'm fairly believe that he can absolutely make a return. It just sucks that there's a chance that he couldn't now from the fact that, you know, he, that he had this chance and now he doesn't anymore. It's just it's it's sad because you know how good he is. Mm-hmm. But you have to realize that both he can come back and also there's so much more that he can do. Besides, guys, you know they have to clear out salary room for Hulk Hogan and Sting. Oh, <laughs> they're not getting. Sting. Can we stop? No, no. Maybe Hogan. <laughs> and they're not getting Sting. Fuck Sting. Fuck Sting and his stupid fucking asshole. No, I mean you can be upset about this all you want, but it is oddly, uh, uh, you know, likely. Arousing. No, well, I don't I, necessarily I know about Sting, but the Hogan. odds that Hulk know. Hogan will make his return to WWE is pretty fucking high. Mm-hmm. No, I that, no, I said Hulk Hogan, absolutely. He'll most likely make his return. Sting is never coming to WWE. Yeah, Sting is yes. never coming I to WWE. I think he will if TNA gets sold. <laughs> or if it, I think, or, I yeah, think they WWE might. WWE got sold and they didn't bring him. Well, no, so or if they lowball him something about his next contract. The only thing that they would do with Sting, I don't think they'd put him in a match because he's not a, he's very good at all anymore. Just and He did great things in another federation for the world of wrestling. They've inducted other people into the Hall of Fame from other federations who did good things in the world of wrestling. So put him in the Hall of Fame, have Ric Flair induct him, the end. Yeah. I mean, no, I, give, I, him, I, give him a Legends contract for an appearance that. now and then, and that's yep. it. Yep, I, mm-hmm. I think they still want him for one match with Taker. He can't. No, bump. nobody fucking wants to see that. I, I want to see watch it. This thing match in TNA. You're the only one. <laughs> I don't know. I think it'd be a good match. He can't bump. We have different <laughs> definitions of that word. And we all thought RVD was trash when he was in TNA, and he didn't really care about what he was doing. He was there to collect a paycheck. I'm pretty RVD, sure Sting is in the same category. RVD still took bumps. Sting can't leave his fucking feet. Yeah, Sting <laughs> doesn't care enough about TNA to do anything like that. I guarantee that if, if Vince signed him said, listen, we want you for one match, one match only, that's it, you and Taker, Mania. Get yourself in shape, and it would be a great it's a, match. It's not a matter though of getting himself in shape. His bones are brittle; he will die. <laughs> Osteoporosis. <laughs> Bobby, what? <laughs> Bobby, yes. Show title: Osteoporosis. Osteoporosis. <laughs> Um, also, I want to remember, I, I, and it, this was posted, I, I apologize, I forget who, who posted this, but I brought it up earlier, but, uh, oh, no, I have it on the wrong computer. Oh, oh no. Phil, for a moment, I'll bring it oh, up on no. the proper one. Phil, 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 but I want to remind you, JTG you. has been employed for the WWE for six years, 183 days, three uh, hours, 33 minutes, and 40. Wait, you just found this, sword? I know. Who is this? JTG? JTG. JTG. Uh, JTG. Brooklyn. You found Brooklyn, the website? Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Fucking, uh, uh, what's, what the fuck is, fucking pothead, little shitbag, what's his name? Evan Bourne. <laughs> Evan Bourne? <laughs> yeah, where has he been? Still work. He's still out. I think he's in. He has no ankles. He's been in also, can I, like a cuss, year. You know. Time to let fucking Christian go. It's time to end this shit, Christian. No. He can't come back. For-
more than two weeks without getting injured, just like Rey Mysterio. Fucking yeah, cut him loose. Wait, are we? Rey Mysterio is Torito, my friend. Hey, hey Lunchbox, are we going to do that thing again? <laughs> Fair enough. Where we all pick are we one wrestler that will be released? You know, it's been yeah, a while. we need to do that again. It's been a while. Oh, yeah. So, so uh, are, is it time? Is it time for another uh, uh Yes. Release? Yeah, I call Evan Born again. WWE Death, what? <laughs> Evan Born again Christian. <laughs> Not yet. Let's, let's, I'll tell you what. <laughs> next week, next week here live on the Wrestling Mayhem Show, we will make our picks. Uh, for who is the next person to be released by the WWE? Who was it that uh, that won last time? I thought I thought it was, it was AJ. Uh, no, it wasn't AJ. It was, it was uh, Alex. Uh, it was Alex, wasn't it? I think it Alex. might have been Alex Carter. Was it? Who was the guy who wrote in Russian? Someone said PPC. Big PPC. Big PPC. Yeah. I don't know. It was whoever picked. Uh, 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 what's his name? Ethan Carter the third. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yep. Trying to pull up the article. So next week, folks, tune in here live on the Wrestling Mayhem Show to find out who we think will be unemployed next. I mean, I, now, just now we're only going to do WWE superstars, right? Not yeah, NXT. WWE. I think it's only a, 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 a WWE. I, I want to re, uh, review how this went last time. Now, remember, the Riz picked the Great Kali. Uh, I picked Ezekiel. Still employed, by the way. I picked Ezekiel Jackson. Still huh? employed. Still employed. Josh, you picked mm-hmm. Keith Slater. Still employed. Still Wrestle employed fan picked Alex Riley. Still collecting a paycheck. Lunchbox uh, got Yoshi Tatsu. Collecting Still a paycheck. Employed. Bobby got Evan Bourne. Where the fuck did you find that <laughs> <What>? picture? <laughs> I didn't find that picture. <laughs> oh, God. That was Lunchbox. Bo Diggity got Camacho. How are these they, people? They, just, they have a match this week. And he Alex Carr on SmackDown. Bed. Uh, Big PPC, Derek Bateman, was the winner. Oh, yeah. Wow. I, I, I have, I nope. PPC. Did we have a prize for that one? No. no, no. Who did Alex no, pick? Uh, I think, you know what? I, I, I think there should be. If anybody wants to contribute, email email us over at Good Times at Wrestling Good Mayhem time. Show. Good time. If you win, if, if somebody outside the circle here, the inner circle that may already have one of these wins, I will give you a shiny copy of my rap album, Crap It Doesn't copy. Matter. Because I think it's really appropriate. I want a copy of that. This is going to that's awesome. <laughs> I will give you a yeah. CD put uh, put in the subject line uh, uh, unemployment line. Unemployment line to good times at wrestling mayhem show dot com, and uh, if you win the de- now, this is going to be a long standing contest. So understand, um, but when we write up the article, we, we, we'll we'll put that in there so we have it recorded. Okay. By by the way, I, even though yeah. even though we're doing the announcement next week, I'm probably still going to go with Alex Riley because good God, I hope it's Alex Riley. <laughs> 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 now listen, we we have to have a cutoff date because we had some uh, some late entries last time. We'll put it out on the Facebook too, but uh, your entries have to be in before the beginning of the show next week. Yeah. So and for it, that, just in case, I mean, the article right up and we can announce them all on the show. Yes. Yes. Now yes. now today is uh, just just so we we narrow that down. Uh, today is the twelfth. Uh, it is so, 11, 12, 13. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. Wheels is still here. It is. <laughs> Did I just scare you or something? Sor- Sorg apparently has ignored all of social media for the entire day to just realize that. Uh, November 18th. Uh, you have to have that in by uh, before we start the show here. And we start here at 9 p.m. at live.sorgatronmedia.com. Uh, 9 p.m. Time. Eastern. Eastern time. Get into that. Get into that. Yes. Uh, so, all right. I think we have that lined up. All right, guys. I want to know. What? Texas Anarchy wants to know if you can send him a cassette tape if he wins. Um, of your think, rap album. I don't think I even have the hardware. What about to do an A track? You can dub it. I I don't even have the hardware to do that anymore. That's that's <laughs> yeah. ridiculous. Put it on wax, bitch. You know what? <laughs> Actually, I might have the hardware to do that. Now that I think of it, there might be a tape deck. Oh there. man. High fidelity. Oh. Tell me, <laughs> what'd you guys learn from wrestling this week? How about you, Eamon? Oh Jesus Christ, not me. Um. <laughs> Uh, I learned from wrestling this week that uh, – shit. Fuck. Skip me. Skip me. Go back. Skip Come you. Back to me. Skip Come back you. To me. What about There's you? There's like eight people you can skip me. What about you, Wheels? <laughs> what did I learn? I learned that 
the beast man can scare men, women, children of all ages because as anybody will see in an upcoming DVD of Open Season 5, he has he scared the boss and the commentators to scatter different directions. So just watch out for hairy men with chains. <laughs> what? <laughs> all right. Uh, all right. I think we all learned that this week. Uh, that's just uh, good life lesson. That's, that's, that's good life advice, Wheels. Um, I learned that we left early on the biggest opportunity from Fleshlight. <laughs> I can't even show this, man. Do I not do show not show this, this on the show on the show, Sword, because we might get banned. But I did think I saw a John Cena Fleshlight. This is not for real. I don't know. Because it's saying available on shopwb.com. No, no. They, yeah. No, never mind. So they, 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 they make it, it in looks sizes real. Brie Bella and Nikki Bella. Aww. Size of Range Rover. <laughs> hey, man, how are you and doing? And also... Oh, so go ahead. Go ahead. Zack Ryder is the greatest wrestler in <laughs> WWE 14. <laughs> yes, because you uh, had a bet for your Extra Life charity. Uh, congratulations, mm -hmm. by the way. Raising over $1,000 for the Children's Miracle Network. Uh, playing video games for Thank 25 you. hours. And some of that time you had to spend because what uh, uh, like TKO had donated. Yep. And Chachi. And Chachi did, Chachi, Chachi did try to sabotage me by picking Zack Ryder. And... Thank and thankfully, I shoved it directly in his face. <laughs> Did you beat the streak? I beat the streak with Zach Ryder. Oh man, <laughs> Amen. What about Less you? Uh, I learned that uh, Pac-Man Jones looks different. That's what I learned. <laughs> wow. I don't fucking know. I didn't learn Amen. that. Amen. That out. It's because he's a. Wow, that was a good one. That was a really good one. He grew out his hair and he wore a hat. Go fuck yourself. Oh, wow. Really really racist. Racist. How about me? How about you? Eat off me. I learned uh, when Randy Orton uh, falls sideways on a table, he turns into the whiniest little bitch. <laughs> As opposed to... And I don't want to talk to you, Vicky. And I don't want to talk to you, Brad Maddox. Just... I mean, we'll cuddle later, but I want to – and the shield, and you didn't save me before. Uh, we don't work for you. We work for uh, everybody except for uh, Triple H. I mean, we work for Triple H. We'll list everybody that we don't work for. Um, where the fuck was I going with Oh, he's a little bitch. Oh, and <laughs> Kane is That was a good promo growing. interpretation. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Mad Mike Kane is awkwardly growing his hair in. <laughs> Acting. Mad Mike, what'd you learn? <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. Um, all right, I learned, I learned two things <laughs> this week. One, I learned that TNA already had to change the wheel of Dixie because it's a different wheel than it was last week, but it's still broken in the same ways that last week's wheel was broken. And also, I learned that TNA is holding one of their one-night-only pay-per-views in Poughkeepsie, and I'm going to go. Awesome. Yes. I'm, I'm actually excited. They've announced two matches for it. It seems good. Awesome. Uh, what about you, Bobby? I learned two things as well. I, I watched TNA this week, and I learned that I'm never going to watch it again. <laughs> wow, Bobby! Bobby, you should you watch it with good us man. on uh, Hangout. I did. Oh, I, that's right. Well, I'm no. never gonna watch you it. Again. A, you are a. Smart, and the other thing man. I learned that the British Bulldog had a bulldog named Winston. <laughs> <laughs> no other explanation. Really? Go Google really, it. Really, Bobby? Yep. <laughs> that's what I learned this week. 
Guys, I he's learned, not wrong. I learned. Well, I'm not wrong. I learned. Sorg, Sorg, what did you learn? I need. Yeah, what did you learn, Sorg? That picture up. Sorg, I must know. What did you learn? I learned that a friend of the show. Uh, Tom, did you still have the flashlight up? No, yeah, I did. I did. I did. <laughs> 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 oh yeah, I need to move that. I definitely need Maggle. to move that. Uh, I learned that a uh, friend of the show, Tom Philsinger, uh, Philsinger Games. We talked about what the great, you know, the card games and uh, and, and all that stuff. Uh, the ROH game and the Legends of Wrestling game and everything. Um, I know that Mr. Uh, Tony Atlas, we're friend, we're a fan of <laughs> Tony Atlas here, <laughs> right? Right. Fox sleeves. <laughs> Uh, he uh, uh, the the headline is draws self portrait for the wrestling game. Now, when I I opened this up and expected the picture, I did I expected a stick figure for one thing. But uh, there is a uh, Tony oh. Atlas's self self portrait. Wow, oh, selfie! Damn. So uh, better selfie. better illustrator than I expected out of uh, out of the uh, 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 card. Deal making. He looks like a, he looks like an old Titus O'Neil with hair. There you go. That is racist. Yeah. No, but that is no, not it racist. Isn't. <laughs> it does. Wow. Wait. 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 We got. Wheels. Looks like Tony Atlas. Wheels. What's the verdict on that one? That is not racist. Yay! Ding. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And from from the chat room, Light Cake TKO learned that that Alicia likes puns almost as much as she does. Yeah, that was pretty funny. That was I. I said it in my live tweets. That was the most character development Alicia Fox had in since she was planned weddings. <laughs> That's true. Oh this yeah. True. <laughs> <laughs> That's how they brought her in, guys. It's the Wrestling Fucking Mayhem Show. Wrestling Mayhem Show dot com. Check us out on iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube. Drop a slide. Any of the uh, answer any of the questions. <laughs> Remember when's all that stuff at. Good times. Good times. Good times. So times. Show. Four one two two zero six WMS zero. We're of course here live every Tuesday at live dot Uh You can go. Hey, we got a link over there. Wrestling Mayhem Show dot com for that live feed as well. And check out. We've been trying to uh, keep up a live feed. If you want to drop in, check out this show or anything else from Sorgatron Media. Go to uh, uh, that address as well and uh, check us out on Justin TV. And just just if you want to hear a little bit more of the mayhem or a little bit more of whatever else we have going on we got all kinds of content playing through there all the time so with that thank you guys at sorgatron here at dj lunchbox at the e riz at mad mike 4883 at bobby fj town at amen two please and at hot wheels rwa i think i got everybody patrick intergalactic on vine there you go <laughs> things that keep me up at night mayhem out just wait just wait just wait just wait just wait